staged beautiful attack on Earth. We have been preconditioned by all the media for the past couple of decades to slowly but surely start accepting the existence of aliens and UFOs. unidentified flying object because this has always been military technologies. Another thing I'd like to point out is surveys and questionnaires. You know we get surveys and questionnaires all the time, you know, sent out by the state or by the government or by our rulers and our officials and so on and so forth. Do you really think these ruling powers care about what you think? Do you really think that they're waiting to ask you and receive your answer before making a decision? What happens with these questionnaires is that they are released. For example, what country do you think the US should attack next? And if it yields back, results like 70% of the U.S. population believe Iran is the next country that should be attacked. This is actually a study conducted for the effectiveness of the media propaganda that they are using. So when they get such results, they look at it and they be like, all right, amazing. Our media propaganda is working. We are purposely trying to manipulate people to think that Iran should be the next one. And check out the survey results. We're doing a great job in propaganda. That's what it's all about. And if the results come back and they aren't up to par, so let's say 20% want war with Iran and 80% want actual peace, they say, okay, so now we have to go and rework our media propaganda and make it more effective so these percentages change. Why am I saying this? Because of the UFO phenomenon. Since the 60s, the amount of people who believe in extraterrestrials have skyrocketed. And they're only increasing day by day in our modern world. This only confirms the success and the plans that are taking place to first manipulate you to believe in UFOs, and second, to conduct a UFO attack that is going to force the whole world to unite to fight off this enemy and accept the new world order. A former Canadian government official is warning we may be on the verge of intergalactic war, saying, quote, the Bush administration has finally agreed to let the military build a forward base on the moon, which will put them in a better position to keep track of the comings and goings of visitors from space and to shoot at them if they so decide. I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists, then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids, and then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. As a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons, and now we should expect the spin. And that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie. A supersonic saucer. Called the Silverbug, it was truly revolutionary. The plans show in detail a multi-jet engine craft that boasted amazing maneuverability and speed. 
It's an intriguing thought that this concept may tie in with the work of the German scientists who brought saucer technology to the US at the close of the Second World War. What was needed were certain cover stories. What do you do when people are spotting aircraft and then telling reporters that they've seen something very unusual flying out of an airbase in Nevada? And frankly, this was the origin of a lot of the sightings that took place in the mid-50s, 1954, 55, 56, of unidentified flying objects, uh, the UFOs. So the CIA was involved in encouraging people to believe that, yes, they saw UFOs. And the CIA and the military tried to be very helpful to reporters to get these stories out, to divert the attention of the country, and particularly the people in this region, about what they had actually seen. Mexican Air Force pilots capturing on videotape what are said to be 11, count them, 11 UFOs. The Mexican Air Force has released a video that some of you are going to find difficult to believe. A journalist says it shows images of UFOs tracking a Mexican military plane. So what's the truth about UFOs? The story of successive attempts to develop radically new forms of flight, conducted under the strictest secrecy, is inextricably bound up with our relationship with UFOs over the last 60 years. Whether it's Allied pilots buzzed by strange balls of fire in 1942, or the Roswell incident five years later, there is a strong case to be made that secret military technology offers a convincing explanation for many UFO stories. Anytime the government has secrets that can, they can keep from us, they can manipulate us by those secrets. In essence, they still remain 25 years at least ahead of us in technology, information, and knowledge, and secrets, and they are using them against us. I heard over the years, many times over, that the plan to usher in the new world order would be to make all the people in this country and around the world feel totally helpless to prevent the new world order from occurring, this world dominance plan by saying that we had been invaded by aliens so that we would say, oh, please, UN, come in and help us all. So bear in mind that there is a plan, orchestration, to get people to be submissive through a secret technology and information that they're keeping from you under the blanket of a so-called National Security Act. Vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. 